First, I want you to know that QuickBooks does double-entry accounting for you. You could skip this movie and still use QuickBooks without a problem. The reason I have included this movie is because if you're going to do your own bookkeeping, there are two accounting methods that I feel everyone should have at least a general understanding of, double-entry accounting and accrual-based accounting. We are going to cover accrual-based accounting in our next movie. Most of you are probably familiar with single-entry accounting. In single-entry accounting, you deposit money and the bank increases or debits your account. When you take the money out, the bank decreases or credits your account. In double-entry accounting, there are two entries made to the transaction instead of one. Unlike single-entry accounting, double-entry accounting shows us not only where the money is going, but also where it came from. Double-entry accounting provides a system of checks and balances by summing all of the debits and summing all of the credits and comparing the totals. If the two totals do not equal, you are out of balance, which means you've made a mistake. This ties back to the balance sheet and what keeps it in balance. As you can see in the example, we've increased our cash account by debiting it, and we've also increased our revenue account by crediting it. I'm sure you're wondering, how do you know when to debit and credit something, and how you know whether that increases or decreases it? Debits and credits increase or decrease account balances based on the type of account. As and expense accounts, you debit to increase them, and you credit to decrease them. Liability, equity, and income accounts, you credit to increase, and debit to decrease. Now I know this may not make a lot of sense yet, but I'm gonna show you a chart that I put together that may help. This is called T accounts. Someone showed this to me when I was just starting out in accounting and I found them to be incredibly helpful. The T forms two columns, debits on the left and credits on the right. Each account forms its own T, and as you can see, it gives you a quick reference on how to increase or decrease an account. In a previous movie, we discussed asset, liability, and equity are associated with your balance sheet, and revenue and expense are associated with your income statement. As you can see, that's broken out here in this slide. So this gives you a quick, easy reference, and I'm gonna provide this slide in an exercise file so that anytime you can go back and print it out put it up on your wall and use it as a reference point for when you're doing your own accounting work in QuickBooks. Now, at this point, I'm sure it's all clear as mud to you. Remember, QuickBooks performs the double entry accounting, so you will not need to memorize this information. However, you want to try and understand the concept behind double entry accounting. The whole idea is to provide a way to ensure you have entered your financial information correctly. If your debits don't equal your credits, then your balance sheet will not balance. Let's look at an example of a transaction you would post in QuickBooks that may help you see how this would work. We're gonna sell an item for $100 and invoice the client. The client's gonna pay us later for this sale. This is called accrual-based accounting. We're gonna discuss it in the next movie in detail. But just so you understand, the idea behind accrual-based accounting is you sell the item today and the client pays you later. You're gonna book the revenue and earn it today because the clients received their product, but they're gonna pay you at a later date. When we sell an item, we're gonna post that money to our revenue account. Now, if you remember in the previous slide, revenue accounts are income accounts, and we need to increase our revenue account by the $100 of the sale. What do we do when we wanna increase an income account? We credit it. Okay, now in double entry accounting, you have to affect two accounts for the one transaction. So we've sold something, we've posted the sale in our revenue account, and now we have to create the second entry. Because the client is going to pay us later, we're gonna post that money in what's called accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is money that the client owes you. They're gonna pay you at a later date. And so you're gonna keep track of that debt or that money that's owed to you through accounts receivable. Now, accounts receivable is an asset account, and we want to increase the asset account by $100. How do we increase an asset account? Well, if we look at the chart we put together of our T accounts, we can see that asset accounts are increased by debiting them. So we're gonna debit our accounts receivable by $100. So now let's look at our transaction for a minute. We've sold something and we've invoiced it. What's happening behind the scenes is QuickBooks is our revenue was increased by $100, so we credit it. 
and accounts receivable was also increased by $100, and we debited it. Okay, now that's how it's going to sit till the client pays us. So the client now has paid us, and we've received the payment, and we have to record that money in QuickBooks. So if we're going to record it in QuickBooks, what's the first account we have to affect? Well, that would be our cash account. We want to record the money. Cash is an asset. We want to increase cash by $100. That's the payment. How do we increase our asset account? If we look at accounts receivable, which is also an asset, we debit it. So we're going to debit cash $100, the money that we were paid. Remember, accounts receivable is used for the money people owe you. These people have now paid us. That means we have to reduce accounts receivable by the $100. We have to lower the amount owed because it's no longer due. So how do we lower an asset account? Well, if we debit to it, increase it, then the opposite would hold true to decrease it. We're going to credit it. So you can see the corresponding entry here. We originally, at the time of the sale, increased revenue, and we increased the money owed to us through accounts receivable. When it was paid to us, we increased our cash, and then we lowered accounts receivable because the money was no longer owed to us. This may be a confusing concept to you, but I want you to remember this movie as we begin working with QuickBooks. When we get to Chapter 9 and look at invoicing customers and Chapter 10, client payments, I want you to reference back to this movie as it will make a lot more sense to you once you see it in action. Remember, QuickBooks will take care of the double-entry accounting that goes on behind the scenes for you. The two most important concepts to remember from this movie are two entries for every transaction, and those entries must equal one another to keep your accounts in balance.